He goes, he's he's slow, right? He's like, we're good. And I'm like, damn, like Dwayne just called me slow. I was like, shit. <laughs> so I was like, I told I told my coach, I was like, yo, I was like, we gotta we gotta speed up. Download the All Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Alon, I want to start with um, your last performance, your Bellator debut in Hawaii. Um, we spoke ahead of that fight, and you know a lot of people, you know, they know you as this flashy striker. But we talked about the ground game, and you went in there and utilized the ground game really well against Bobby King. Take us through that fight and, and talk about how you felt about the performance. Yeah. Um, so before, it's funny that the, the clip that you posted on Instagram, how it talked about how <laughs> people don't realize I like to do ground and pound. That's like one of my favorite things to do. And then that's what ends up happening in the fight. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Bobby's a tough guy. Um, and I think people sleep on his ability. Um, I think I might talk about that too last time we we spoke, but people don't realize like he's actually he's, Bobby's really good. Like he's just he's just kind of a sleeper. I mean, if you look at the people he's lost to, um, Alexander Shabley, who's currently number one in the lightweight division, and then another Russian guy. But they basically just took him down for three rounds and laid on top of him. So I I I'd like to say like when I take him down, at least I was trying to like work and improve my um position i was i mean i'm looking to finish you if i get on top i'm not looking to hold you down and like just like win on points like i'm always looking to go for the finish the whole time um so obviously the, the game plan was to go out there um put bobby on the cage or trying to you know try to push him back and eventually look for uh clinching a lot looking for takedowns off the cage or get him to the cage and take him down first round is i mean obviously it's very hard to He's pretty hard to take down. Um, his, his wrestling defense is pretty good. Um, he moves. F- I don't want to say like we didn't like assume he would be a fast striker, but he moves faster than what he looks like when he normally or just like when you're watching him on video. Um, so and he's really good. His footwork, like his distance control, because we, we, we were kind of planning on him when I was throwing kicks or doing anything that he would kind of either be there for it to eat it and like counter, um, or he might try to stuff me, but he kind of just like faded back a little bit. So a lot of those kicks that I threw that were just like, you know, kicks to throw out there, I was playing on just like smashing them into his like arms, but he just kind of just, you know, faded back and just kind of avoided them. So we had to kind of, um, you know, plan, plan B type change, like how we were approaching, um, the striking wise. And then, uh, and if you rewatch the first round, like, you know, I, I don't think people are used to seeing me lose actual rounds. And I, I would say like, even if, if I go watch it back, like, I mean, in my mind, I still won that round, but it wasn't like the most dominant round. But, uh, if you look at like all, like all of my fights, like pro amateur, I, I don't really lose rounds. And, and it's funny cause I have four losses as a pro but it's because I got finished. It wasn't that I was losing those rounds. So if it goes a decision, if you if you look at any of my decisions, they're all unanimous. I don't I don't go to split decisions. Um, so like all my family and everybody's freaked out after the first round. They're like, oh my god, you know, like this isn't good. <laughs> but I'm just like I'm like whatever, just the fight. So you know, we make our adjustments, go in the second round. Uh, my coach tells me like let's let's step up the intensity. Let's get a little more intense. Uh, Let's be more aggressive going forward. That's what we did. And, you know, I, I made some adjustments with my shots. Um, got my hands locked up on a takedown and got down on the ground. And then, you know, I only had two takedowns in that fight. And that's all I needed because, you know, once I got him to the ground, he couldn't get back up. And I don't even think it's that he couldn't get back up. I mean, I, I have really good ground control. But if you notice, like, Bobby's really good at um, mitigating damage. So, like, I couldn't really drop any, like, really clean shots on him, like, most of the time because he's very good at defending. But when there's, like, a there's like a weird um, thing where it's, like, if you're going to defend from taking damage, it's going to be very hard to get up. Yeah. Um, if you prioritize getting up, 
you're going to eat some shots on the way up. And he opted to, you know, blunt the damage so he didn't get up instead. Um, so, you know, that was his choice. Uh, I think he was looking for submissions off his back, looking to sweep me and whatnot. Um, I mean, I'm a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. I've been a brown belt for like like four or five years now, so it's not like my grappling isn't there. You know, I'm pretty comfortable, you know, when people throw submissions up. And what's funny is the in the third round when he when he swept me over into mount off the cage, he actually he he stuck his toes in the cage and pulled me over. So I, I don't really consider that a, a legit sweep. I mean, it was a tight, it was a tight move. I, I'll take it. I mean, that's a, that's a vet move. Like I have no. I'm like, yo, that's you know good for you. Um, but I remember my coach was telling me after the fight, he's like, hey man, he's like. We got to tighten up that jits. He's like, you know, you got swept. I think you got complacent there. And I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, I didn't get complacent. I was like, he just, I was like, he stuck his toe in the cage and pulled me over. And but I remember when that was happening in my mind, I was, cause I was in like a perfect position. I had the underhook, I had his head controlled. Like this is like an unsweepable position and I'm getting swept. And I remember as I was rolling over in my mind, I was like, I'm trash. I'm trash. And I kept getting rolled. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt super comfortable when he mounted me. Like I didn't think he was gonna get anything off. And then obviously I, I scrambled, got back on top. And then it's kind of where the rest of the fight ended up. Uh, just top top control, uh, heavy smash pass, pressure passing. Like that's just my whole game. Um, so yeah, I mean, and Bobby's tough. I mean, I knew Bobby would be there for three rounds. Bobby's got good cardio. He he trains with Dwayne Ludwig. I mean. He, you know, up in Colorado. I mean, he's got, you know, he's pretty solid. He's got a lot of experience. So it was, it was a good, it was a good fight to have uh, after being off for, you know, a year, and to make my debut against someone who's already fought in Bellator five times. You know, what do you take from that experience, that fifteen minutes, and say, you know, moving forward, you know, you you, you think maybe I need to sharpen on, sharpen up on some of these aspects of my game. Was there anything? Uh, all right, for sure. Um, you know, if, if you don't learn something from any of your fights, whether you win or lose, I mean, then you kind of wasted that opportunity to, to learn. Um, so in the first round, in between uh, the first and second round, when Dwayne was talking to Bobby, uh, he I don't know if anybody caught it, but obviously we've seen the fight back a million times, but he comes to the corner, he tells Bobby, he goes, hey, he goes, I like what you're doing. He's like, let's, let's keep the hands a little higher. He goes, but he goes, He's he's slow, right? He's like, we're good. And I'm like, damn, like Dwayne just called me slow. I was like, shit. <laughs> so I was like, I told I told my coach, I was like, yo, I was like, we gotta, we gotta speed up. And I think what he means is it's like I, I play like a like my tempo, like I kind of slow people down in their fights because people get like if you notice like a lot of fights, like they could be wild, like they're just they're throwing crazy combos and everybody's moving super fast. But then like when I fight those same people, it's not the same tempo. Like I just tend to slow people down. Um, but I get a little too lackadaisical as well. Like I slow down too much. And then I think that's what he means. That's what he meant by being slow. Not that I'm physically slow, just kind of like my whole pace and everything is just way too slow. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I throw like, like my the reason I'm able to throw like hundreds of kicks like it's nothing is because I throw a lot of stuff at like fifty percent, like fifty percent, sixty percent. I can throw those all day. Um, so the biggest thing in camp uh, this time around was just you know really ripping the pads hard, like throwing harder and faster because I have a great cardio base. Like I, my my conditioning is pretty good. Like I don't really gas out, um, but I play too conservatively as well sometimes or, or most of the time i guess because my biggest thing is i'm always afraid of gassing out and it hasn't happened but that's always like a fear in the back of my mind even though i train hard and i know i have great cardio when it comes to fight time i just tend to play super reserved like i'm saving conserving energy so the biggest thing is like you know just, you know when i'm hitting pads just turning up the pace hitting hard kicking hard and building up my my cardio base to know that I'm able to do this for 15 minutes at a high pace with hard uh, power, um, you know, and not have to like feel like I need to conserve my energy, um, especially in sparring as well. Obviously, in sparring, I try to turn it up. I'm always trying to push the pace, even if I gas myself out early on. 
you know, it's just pushing my pace to that limit because then the next time I do it, I can go a little longer at that same pace. Um, so that was a big one. Um, and just tightening up, tightening up our takedowns, like our entries and our finishes and um, options. So like when Bobby's stuffing me, you know, what to go to after he's the initial um, takedown defense is happening. Um, and then specifically for um, Alfie, it's just, it, it's kind of all the same stuff. I mean, it's, not, it's nothing too crazy. I mean, he likes to play the cage a lot. He plays the warning track a lot of times. Um, but like when he fought Alexander Shabli, Shabli kind of slowed him down too. Because if you get into a crazy fight with him, he'll get into a crazy fight. Like when he fought Tim Wilde, um, that was a pretty wild fight. But Shabli just kind of played the warning track the whole time and just slowed down the whole tempo. Because, you know, Alfie's athletic. He's fast. He's, you know, explosive. So you know, you take him at a high pace, he's going to match you with that. Um, so I think you got to slow him down a little bit. And, uh, you know, I learned, like I said, I learned a lot from, from, from fighting Bobby. I learned a lot about like what I'm capable of, um, in the grappling and, you know, striking sense and just things that we needed to type, tighten up, you know, tighten up the hands a little bit. And, uh, that distance, like if, if my guy starts fading back, we've got options to, um, you know, adapt to that and continue our combos and do what we got to do. Do you feel like the Bobby King fight, the style that he brings is a good stepping stone to facing Alfie Davis? Yeah. Um, so the, they're, they're kind of like completely different um, just because the way Alfie play, Alfie plays like a lot, like how I used to play, like my whole game coming up in the pro uh, scene like in the regional scene was very like evasive. It was more like fighting backwards and side and moving to the side and angles getting out. And that's kind of how a lot of my, my early career was, but now that I have a different style. Um, Bobby's more of that. Like he's going to be, he's been moving in front of your face the whole time, but he has good footwork. So he is creating angles and then he'll kind of blitz in and he will push you back if you let him. Um, Whereas, like, I think Alfie just kind of takes advantage of spurts, right? Like, he'll, he'll lull you into something. Like, you'll be following him and tracking him. You know, get him to the cage. And then he'll he'll burst with, like, a like a hard sprint cross. Or um, he likes throwing those, the, the double flying knees. Or any type of kick. And then he'll, he will, like, blitz forward for a little bit. But then I think he likes to, like, just kind of play back again. And I'm not really one to play, like, uh, 50-50, you know, where two guys are standing in the center of the octagon or the that, that the center of the cage, and they're kind of just, like, playing tit for tat. You go combo, I go combo, or whatever it is. I'd rather just either I'm pressing you and I'm, I'm the one being the aggressor or early on, like it was, like, I'm playing, you know, more evasive counter-striking, like I'm moving, creating angles back, you know, moving back and fighting backwards and piecing you up. So I'm, I've never really been into that 50-50 game. So I think Alfie just plays the opposite side of that game than what Bobby did. So it's kind of just like completely different style. Um, he's also a traditional, uh, you know, kickboxer, I guess. Um, kick heavy, right? He's got he's got the axe, the axe kick, obviously the axe man. Um, spinning hook kick, stuff like that. Uh, whereas Bobby's very hand heavy he's very boxing heavy i wouldn't say alfie's boxing heavy um he's just more reactive with his hands so if you're coming at him he he throws kind of reactively like pretty quick um i'd say he's more aggressive with his kicks than than anything yeah you know with uh with alfie you know this this fight could turn into like you said a wild fight you know what i mean i think it i think you might be more in control of how this fight plays out rather than Alfie. Do you feel that way? Yeah, for sure. Um, and my coach, uh, Vince McGinnis, he says it all the time. He's like, you know, Alfie's a tough fight. I mean, obviously Alfie was ranked number nine before he fought uh, Shabley and he lost that decision. And now he's on a one fight win streak. Oh, I'm sorry. He had a draw and then he's on a one fight win streak against uh, Guti. 
And, you know, so he's telling me, like, you know, this is a tough fight, but he's like, you know, I think if we're doing the right things and we stick to the game plan, do what we need to do, it's only going to be as hard as we make it. So if I'm doing all the correct things, I'm following the game plan, and, you know, even if even if the first game plan isn't going correctly and we have to switch up and adapt, as long as I'm doing the things that we've practiced and use our contingencies, then it's only going to be as hard as we make it. And, you know, that's a lot of times, that's just kind of how it is. Like, it's it, it's kind of on you. Like, I don't think Alfie's going to do something that, or, or fight in a way that I just, I can't ever control what's going on. I think I'm going to be able to control how the fight is going. Um, like I said, is, is, that's, that's, basically, that's basically what it comes down to. It's just, it's going to be as hard as I, as I make the fight is. Have you, have you done any, cross training for this fight for this for this training camp no I've, I've been pretty much doing my whole camp just here in tampa um at kaizen uh, i go over to def war with my other team and my wrestling coach mahmoud uh but we have added some things um not with different people but like my wrestling coach i do privates with him a couple days a week like just you know, me and him and maybe one other guy to be a body and we're just working, you know, whatever we need to work. Um, that's extra. I still do my mit- my mitts with uh, Vince, you know, multiple times a week. Um, what else? Uh, oh, you know what? You know what I did is like, I don't know if you ever, do you watch, have you ever seen Henry Cejudo's YouTube, uh, YouTube channel? Like his like, break, like he like, he does like countdown type videos yeah. like leading up. So when he was getting ready for Aljamain, he uh, he starts it off in the very beginning. I think he's like ten weeks out from his fight, and he has all his coaches in a room. I mean, it's like a it's like a board meeting for for like some gigantic like corporation. But he's got all his coaches in the room, and they're taught and they're looking at the schedule on the wall. And he's like, you know, he's like, here, he's like, I want to do this. Like, I want to be able to do this. Like, just put a bag on the ground, just do heavy ground and pound. He's like, I think the strength and the conditioning here with so-and-so is going to work. And his coaches are giving him feedback on what they think about the schedule he came up with. And they're also saying, well, hey, let's do this here instead. And basically they break down. And then they're like, you know, the first six, seven weeks going to be hard, as you know, whatever. By the time you should be in shape, last two, three weeks we're going to taper. So it's just very like he's very uh, analytical and organized with his camp. Whereas like my camps are always kind of just like, you know, oh, okay, well, it's time. We got a fight coming up. All right, let's get back to the mid schedule. Let's, you know, I'm going to be at these classes. But now I met with, I uh, actually had all my coaches meet up. So my strength and conditioning coach, my my wrestling coach, my striking coach, um, we all met up. Even my, my physical therapist, like she's in contact with my strength and conditioning coach about what I'm doing those days that I'm not with her. And, uh, they all have my schedule, um, like my, my schedule on a, on an app. And we basically just talked about what, what is the goals for camp? How do we want this? You know, what, what do I need like to improve for this fight? And we came up with a schedule right there and then, and just figured out like, okay, well, let's add this, you know, these two extra sessions of wrestling in, let's add this, let's do this here and here. And uh, so I think like, that's one of the biggest things too about this camp is just very like organized. It's very organized and, you know, specific to this fight and what I need uh, to win this fight. Alfie Davies, man, he, um, he's he been fighting for Bellator for a while. He has a really, really good record. I believe he's 6-1-1. One one. He's fought top 10 guys. He's been ranked. I feel like this fight is going to be a test to see if you're ready for the top 10 in Bellator. Do you feel that way? And how do you feel like you need to perform in this one? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think so too. Um, you know, he's fought some, he's fought some tough guys. I mean, obviously, Shabley's the toughest one minutes his loss. Yeah. Um, I, I joke about it with my my coach all the time. Is that I'm, I'm follow, I'm, I'm gonna be following Alexander Shabley's road up to the, <laughs> up to the top of the division because he fought Bobby King and I fought Bobby King and then. He fought Alfie Davies, and now I'm fighting Alfie. I'm just gonna keep following whoever he fights and follow his road. Um, but yeah, you know, him being—he was like I said, he was ranked number nine at the time, and 
you know, he's an exciting fighter. He's good. Um, I know Beltor likes him and, you know, he's obviously he's from the UK. So Beltor Europe, you know, that's, that's big with him. And I think it is a good test for me just to see where I'm at, I guess, as far as, uh, you know, as far as like the top 10 guys and then like everybody else, um, you know, and I was, you know, it was, it was, I don't say I was surprised that they gave me this fight. Um, because to be honest, I was trying to fight like in September, I was trying to do the September 23rd in Ireland, but, um, I guess they only wanted Euro people on that car, but they, they, they like put a lot to like get him his visa to fight over here. So, and we like the matchup. So it was either take it for August or they're going to match me up with somebody else in September. We might not like the matchup as much, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a good test. I mean, I mean, we're both we both like to throw a lot of traditional kicks. Like, you know, I if you watch any of my fights, I throw spinning hook kicks and spinning back kicks, and you know, taekwondo kicks as well. So I'm very like adept to the game that he plays um, and his style. So I think our styles are gonna are match match up pretty well. Um, either way, I think it's gonna be an exciting fight. And. It, like I said, like if if you know, or when I go out there and I get this win, I I don't I don't expect. Well, I'm not going to be ranked because he's not even ranked, but it's definitely going to put me one step closer to getting ranked, and then I can start getting into these bigger fights a little sooner um, rather than later, which obviously brings in more money, more sponsors, and that's what we want. <laughs> Without a doubt, without a doubt, man. August 11th, Belter 298, South Dakota. Alon, man, thank you so much for the time as always and all the best in this fight. Uh, I'm I'm interested, man. This is a this is an interesting fight. I think a lot of people should keep their eye on this matchup. Awesome, man. Thank you. It's always a it's always a good time being on.